Hello everyone and welcome to another Figma tutorial. This video we're going to take a look at the parallax effect. Now what is the parallax effect? Have you ever scrolled through a page that felt dynamic as if you were going through more than one view at once? And that is exactly what the parallax effect is. And it happens when the different elements of a page move at different speeds. You can see the same thing happening on your screens right now with our demo file. So let's take a look at it clearly. Hello everyone, I'm Faim Kamal, UI UX designer for Essential Web Apps. We regularly upload videos on WordPress, Figma, website and social media strategies, and web design and development topics. If you find our videos to be helpful and informative, then please consider subscribing to our channel and hit the bell icon for new video notifications. If you like this video, please hit the like and share button. We also have both free and paid courses on Figma. Check out the description box for the links to the courses. Without any further ado, let's get started with today's topic. Alright, so now that we've taken a look at our demo file, now we can move into our actual file and start designing. So let's move into the design tab. So we're going to make this file available for you guys for practice. And what you, I want you to do is first we need to start with the full page design so that we have an idea of how we're going to move. So here you can see that I already have a full page design. So let's zoom into that. So I've just done another copy of it over here. So here you can see that we have this one uh, main primary image on top. So this is our primary foreground object. So this is the one that's going to be moving around on top. And everything else is the background over here. So the foreground object moves around and the background objects shift. So the first uh, image you can see that over here is where it starts off closed like this so this starts off as closed so from there so i want to move the product to the right hand side and then to the left hand side and then on top uh, right on top of this product over here and then it wants to i want it to move over there and then it resets back and gives us access to the full page so now that we have an understanding of what you're targeting now we can move on to actually designing it. So first we're going to make a copy of it and we'll just rename it to slides one and we'll just make three duplicates of it first. So next what we're going to do is we're going to select this and we're just going to bring it up. Let's zoom in. We'll select the button and actually let's uh, put it to the background. Then we also select the heading and this circle. Then we scale it down, so we select the scale tool, keyboard shortcut K, and we hold down the option button so that it stays in the center, and we make it all small. And once it's small enough, we press 0 two times, and you can see that the opacity is set to 0%. And then we select the cap, the logo, and the uh, brand name, and we bring them all down, and we bring them all to front, and you can see that this does not actually cover everything so we'll keep it over here and we'll bring this up a little bit more uh, just like that and then we're simply just going to move to the move key again so that keyboard shortcut is V and then we're just going to select the cap and just increase the height of it so this is where everything starts so on the second slide over here I want uh, the writing to pop out a little but not too much and on the third slide, it is exactly where it should be. So this is how the third view should be. So let's close this off. And on the middle over here, so this is also done. So we can set it to 900 as well. And the reason we're selecting the height to be 900 is because we have all of these sections. The height is set to 900. So that way we know how we're changing from slide to slide and it will be easier to work. So on the second frame, what I want to do is we're going to select the button, the text heading, and we're going to select the circle. Once they're selected, we move back to the scaling tool. We hold down the option key and we just pop them out like this. And over here, let's select the uh, move tool and let's change the opacity. Let's say 55. We're going to select this and we're going to bring it up just a little. And we're going to bring this down. And now let's bring it to front. So let's select the move tool and we're just going to increase the height. And we're going to increase it from the bottom a little as well. Send the button to back as well. Alright, so now let's just start prototyping. We're going to select the first slide and we're going to make a connection to the second slide. 
and the animation is going to be set to on click navigate to slide 2 animation smart anime and we're going to set a custom bezier and we're going to try to make this shape over here something like this with just a little twist like this next we're going to change the timing from 1900 to let's say 500 let's change the design height again and from slide 2 we make another connection to slide 3 change this a little so we're gonna make it like this you can play around a little bit if you want and see what happens so that will give you you'll start getting a hang of it and we're gonna set the timing to 1900 seconds and this one should be automatic so not on click so this is going to be after delay the lowest delay that you can put is one millisecond you cannot put zero unfortunately so let's just quickly go ahead and check how this looks Alright, so let's just give it a look. So here this is this pops out and then it lets out slowly. Alright, that's nice. Now we're gonna make another copy of it, and from here on everything becomes a lot simpler. So we're gonna duplicate this. So we're gonna bring this down to the right hand side over here, and then we're gonna set the top and we're gonna select these as well, and we're gonna bring them down. And we're just going to rotate it a little to the right just to give it some depth. And we're going to select the slide and the entire frame. And we're going to select everything inside by pressing the enter button. So once we have that, we're going to bring everything up. Change the height to 900 again. And we're just going to repeat this for everyone. So remember that. And now let's duplicate it again. We're going to move the image a little to the right and this seems about right and as this one as well and we're going to bring this down to the left hand side and this time we're going to rotate it the other way. Alright so we're going to readjust everything again, duplicate it again, from here we want to drop it into this product so right on top of it so first we're going to select everything and we're going to bring them down and we're going to bring all of them on top we'll set the scaling tool and bring it down and bring it down and match it and we'll do the same for the cap as well Now once that's done, we're going to select the entire page and we're going to just redo that and bring everything up. Change the height and duplicate the frame again. And from here, we want to move our selection over here and then we're going to once again place them on top of this image over here. There we have it. So we'll select everything in the page and bring it all up. And change the height. And from here, we simply want to make another copy of the full page to access, or we can keep it there over there as well. So we'll move into the prototypes tab. And from, we have up to this one, uh, slide three. From slide 3, we're going to create another interaction. So let's drag the interaction. And let's set it to custom bezier. And we'll just select it to linear. And the timing should be 2400 on all of them. And we're just going to repeat the process for every other frame. So now let's check our demo. So we have it up to over here, so let's just restart it. And yes, everything is moving in. There are a few things that have changed. You can see that the images and the text are moving. But on the previous screen, the image did not move. We'll fix that in a moment.
and everything else seems to work fine. So let's just uh, uh, fix the few issues that I've seen. So first of all, we need to bring the foreground objects on top. So let's select these text and the cap and we're going to bring them all to the front. On the third slide, so from here we move into this one. So let's make some quick changes and see if we can make it a little better. So let's increase this by size and we're going to select all of this on the text and the right hand side box and we're going to move them out of the box. It's still in this frame, just out of the box and then we're going to select this and we're just going to increase like this. All right, so now let's move it back. And on this one, what we're gonna do is, let's select everything and bring them down. And we're gonna select this and this. Let's select the image and the text and we're gonna move it left. And let's move this text a little. So we're just moving things around and you'll see in a moment why. And now let's select the entire slide and select everything and move everything back up. All right, so now let's change the height back to 900. And that should be enough. So let's check and restart. It pops out slowly, first fast, and then it starts spreading slowly. From here on, you can see that the image and uh, the text and the right hand side box moves in from the right hand side. And then on the next image, you can see that the image moves and makes way for the text. And now when we move into the next one, you can see that the text moves upward and the image moves leftward as a forward uh, highlight object moves downwards. And from there, it's all the same. And so now you can see that we have access to our full page. So I hope you guys learned a few things and you guys had fun learning it. So this will be all for today. Please subscribe to our channel. There will be a lot more resourceful videos to come. And also check out our Figma free course as well as our paid course if you're interested into becoming an UI UX designer. Thank you all and I'll see you guys back on the next video.